Thank you for joining us on the news desk on QTV. The headline, the Zambia National Farmers Union with an FQ finds the 65 kwacha pay 50 kg market price offered by the Food Reserve Agency FRA absurd and heraneously low. The Civil Society for Poverty Reduction, CSPR, has advised the government through the Ministry of Agriculture to start now the distribution of farming inputs under the FRSP. Here now is the news in detail. The Zambia National Farmers Union ZNFU finds a 65 kwacha per kg market price offered by the Food Reserve Agency FRA absurd and heraneously low. And the union says it did not meet the FRA to discuss maize prices after last year's efforts yielded a blank because FRA told the union it was government that set the 65 kwacha or 60 kwacha per 50 kg bag with no consultation and government insisted it was FRA. ZNFU President Javis Zimba has urged the government to maintain consistency in the export of agriculture commodities as uh, the food balance sheet's figures declared that a surplus of 341,313 metric tons could potentially be exported. Mr. Zimba says this will motivate private sector participation in maize marketing when government restates that government that Zambia is open for maize exports. He says now that the FRA has announced its, its flow price for the maize, farmers should target to sell their maize at a profit. He adds that the union has reduced production costs to guide farmers as they sell their crops. Mr. Zimba also finds the statement that the Zambia National Farmers Union ZNFU was consulted at a stakeholders meeting to arrive at the 65 kwacha for a 50 kg bag of maize by the FRA decennious as the ZNFU did not attend such meetings with them. He states that a formal complaint will be launched with government because the union stands ready to dialogue with government if called upon to do, but not engaging in spin media tactics. Meanwhile, the Miller's Association of Zambia, MAS, says now that the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, has announced the maize price, the Miller's will go in full force to purchase the crops. Mars Chairperson Andrew Chitantala tells QTV News via telephone that the millers are ready on the market buying the maize but that some farmers were hesitant to sell their produce as they were waiting for the FRA price. Mr Chitantala has also commended the government through the FRA for increasing the price of the crop saying last year the farmers complained of the price. He says the association is glad that they were consulted by the FRA in deciding how the market should be managed. I think uh, FRA must be commended. Uh, why my think so? Because uh, last year offering the kwacha and uh, some farmers complained. So um, I must also say that we had a consultative meeting. Uh, all the stakeholders uh, said uh, there are a few months, GTAs, and uh, yes. uh, we started to discuss and reflect on the issues um, as to how we expect. Uh, the market to perform, the market that uh, it exists on to perform this year. So um, we were part of the discussion, though not uh, on, the, uh, on, on the on the price that has been announced. But however, I think uh, that was out widely, and uh, have come up with a price that uh, they think that um, is the best price they can offer. So we were on the move, and uh, I think for us as well as yes, we're already on the market, and um, we are all competing for the same maze. So it's a welcome move and that uh, following the announcement, and then um, we'll see some in improvement in as far as the, of the maze on the market, considering that uh, most farmers were saying they were waiting for government to announce. Now that EPRA has announced, we hope to see an improvement in the intake or inflow of maize into the mills. And in another development, People's Alliance for Change, Park President Enford Banda has observed that the decision by the Food Reserve Agency FRA to focus on purchasing only three crops who have adverse effects on the crop diversification. Mr. Banda feels that the FRA should have been purchasing all the crops that it is mandated to buy from farmers. He says it is unfortunate that the farmers will have to start looking for the market despite being encouraged by the government to diversify their crop production. Mr. Banda tells QTV News that most of the crops will just go to waste because the farmers will have to market to sell their produce. Mr. Banda has also described the FRA maize price as a mockery to the hard-working farmers in the country.
So you see the idea of just them buying maize, rice, and soya beans, I, I, you know, entails that you know a, a farmer has to find their own market. Now the question that we need to be asking ourselves is that uh, how many farmers have got the capacity, you know, to sell, uh, you know, these other crops using their own infrastructure, using their own, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, mo mo mobility. It's very difficult. So at least what the government needs to do is that if they do not have the money, you know, to buy all these crops, they need to create a system that would encourage, um, first of all, the private sector to buy these crops at a very good price, and then also to make sure that uh, a structure is put in place to make it easy for the farmers, you know, to sell these commodities, you know, to uh, the private sector. But the government hasn't done anything. So meaning that most of these crops outside maize, rice, and soybeans are just going to rot, you know, in the backyards of farmers. And yet the farmers, you know, um, you know, uh, they, 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 they did plant, uh, I mean, they, didn't, uh, they did uh, uh, yield these uh, crops for the purpose of selling them to FRA. So we would like to urge the government to urgently, you know, find a structure that would make it easy, f you know, for uh, for the farmers to sell these other crops that the government, uh, uh, that the Food Reserve Agency is not buying from the farmers. The Civil Society for Poverty Reduction, CSPR, has advised the government through the Ministry of Agriculture to stop now the distribution of farming inputs under the Convention of Farmer Input Support Program, FRSP. CSPR Advocacy and Communications Officer Max Toninkoma says to avoid late delivery of farming inputs into the districts, it is important that the government starts the distribution of inputs now. Mr. Nkoma is also encouraging the state to endeavor that the e-voucher system becomes an optimal way of the distribution of the farming inputs. He is further encouraging the private sector to take financial services to the remote areas of the country, as this also misses out from the e-voucher services. As a program, we must admit that it came with its own challenges, and some of the challenges had to do with the banks delaying to process the cards for the farmers, the banks delaying to deposit money into the farmers' accounts, even when the government had already given the, the funds to the, to, to the banks. And now we have seen uh, that the government has, has said that 40% of the beneficiaries are going back to the old you know, conventional way of distributing farming inputs. For us, first of all, we must say that um, it is good. It is good to um, to experience or experiment uh, certain things. And uh, now that we implemented, we know where we went wrong. And uh, the government has come out in the open that uh, they are going to revert back. Why they are reverting back is because certain things that we ought to have learned, we didn't learn. We didn't give ourselves enough time to learn as a, as a country and we last to implement a new program altogether for the whole country. And it is good that uh, we have detected it so early, otherwise it was going to, to, to disturb the distribution process of uh, farming inputs, in, even in these districts. The ruling Patriot Fund says the calls by Patriots for Economic Progress, PEP leader Sean Tembo, that PF should disclose the source of funding of their campaigns are misplaced. PF Media Director Sandy Chanda says the Patriot Front has no time to start justifying how it is mobilizing funds for the campaigns. Mr. Chanda has since challenged Mr. Tembo to present the evidence so as to stop these speculations, saying the party will not respond to fictitious kind of politics. But Mr. Tembo, in his statement, has threatened to go to court to seek an order that would compel the ruling party to avail their financial records and allay fears that they have been illegally dipping their hands into the Bank of Zambia vault. Firstly, um, we are glad that in his statement he acknowledges that um, his calls are not uh, you know, sound at law. They're, they're, those, are, those are misplaced calls. And um, we don't think that uh, we have time to entertain uh, such uh, athletic uh, thinking um, in our endeavor to justify how the Patriotic Front mobilizes uh, itself as a party. The Patriotic Front is a party that existed in the opposition before and mobilized itself in the opposition to a point of uh, winning an election. And um, even at this point, the Patriotic Front continues to mobilize itself, mobilize its membership. And um, the Patriotic Front as a party um, has made it very, very clear, uh, even to people like uh, Mr. Sean Tembo, 
if he's alleging that the patriotic front is dipping uh, its fingers uh, into the treasury you know and uh, into bank of zambia we challenge him to bring the evidence you know because once he's given us evidence and we respond to that evidence we are not going to uh, start responding or reacting to fictitions of his own imagination that is not what we exist for uh, we would urge him to get very very busy we think that uh, he's trying his best to uh, prove that uh, he's uh, politically relevant uh, but we have no time to entertain uh, his imagination we think that um, he could do better with his zambia religious council zrc executive director howard banda has advised political parties to educate their cadres against engaging in violence Mr. Banda says Zambia needs peace and it should not be deliberate sport for the sake of an election. He has told Q News that it is an assault to the Christian declaration when the political parties engage in political violence. Mr. Banda has, however, called on Zambians to exercise tolerance towards each other, irrespective of their political affiliations, saying there is a need for politicians to lead the crusade for peaceful election. He has emphasized the need for politicians to demonstrate a high level of tolerance to ensure that there is always peace in the country. Mr. Banda has further urged the political parties to restrain their supporters from causing instability and caution them against interfering with the work of the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ. He feels that democracy is the largest market for competitive ideas and not fights. Zambia is a Christian nation. And by that virtue, there are other religions also who indicate the interest of seeing peace in this country. So as a council, we are saying that uh, uh, it is an assault to our democratic declaration and to the Christian declaration when we measure into violence. They named the political parties, they have got their presidents, they have got structures, and their structures, they have got also what they say manifesto. I don't think violence is in one of those manifestos that they, they, they bring to the people of this country. The first you know, priority is to ensure they safeguard the peace that we have enjoyed in this country for more than 50 years now. So let's not politics separate us and bring us to ideals of our you know, uh, civil uh, unrest, which is not good, especially that Zambia, we are in the central uh, Africa where a huge investment is taking place. We must also be careful that we don't scare away the investment that we have broadcasted outside there. For an investor to come in the country, it should be a violence-free country. So uh, our appeal and advice that we may also render to our brothers and sisters who have entered into a political industry. It's now an industry. It's no longer a calling, a, a political industry. They should bear in mind that the blood of the innocent that they actually abuse during uh, elections, uh, one day will be accounted for on their head. We. United, Prosperous and Peaceful Zambia, UPPZ spokesperson Francis Kope, has charged that the PF government has accrued more debt than any other past administrations. Mr. Kope is concerned that Zambia's foreign and domestic debt will continue to undermine the country's credit worthiness and compromise their ab ability to secure new f funding. He has told Q News in an interview that while debt remains crucial to development, it is the manner in which it is used that is of concern. And Mr. Kope has condemned President Lungu's decision to send five ministers to travel to China to hold strategic consultations with the Chinese authorities, financial institutions, and companies doing business in Zambia to discuss the date. That's a debt restructuring program. Those assigned are Finance Minister Margaret Monacatre, Foreign Affairs Minister Joseph Malangi, Housing and Infrastructure Development Minister Ronald Chitotela, and National Development and Planning Minister Alexander Chitemes. So we, we don't want to see a situation where the future generation is, uh, is uh, totally affected. We know that when you do a bullet payment of 700 million US dollars plus uh, a 1.2 billion uh, US dollars, that will drastically affect our, our economy because you are talking about uh, close to 7% uh, percent, uh, of um, your, your budget, just you know, going uh, more than 7% of our budget going to to debt. Now, the danger of uh, getting loans from uh, you know uh, commercial market as well as uh, you know, China Chinese uh, you know loan 
is that um, uh, these loans come with uh, uh, tough conditions and these conditions uh, will, uh, mean that uh, we'll see more suffering among the Zambians, more taxes, we have uh, taxes everywhere, even when we are breathing, there are taxes all over, uh, and, and we have seen that uh, uh, our colleagues, besides promising a number of projects, they are not doing those projects, and even when they do certain projects, they do them at a very uh, you know, uh, expensive uh, undertaking. So more loan, especially uh, uh, the, the delegation that the president has sent uh, to China, will affect our economy negatively. There is no economy that will, can, can be running only by, by debt because the, 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 the economy will be affected due to the shrinking space of um, you know, activities, productive activities. Uh, all we will have to be doing now is to pay loan and to have more taxes. And when you have more taxes, uh, then you, you'll be choking um, you know, uh, business, uh, businesses which are in, in the... Inspector General of Police Kakoma Kanganja has been called upon to ensure that police officers, more especially those assigned to man political activities, are dressed in full police uniform. Senior citizen Dante Saunders is calling on the police chief to ensure that police officers are dressed accordingly. Mr. Saunders has noted with concern that there are pictures circulating on social media of police officers clad in casual clothes, clothes while policing a UPND political activity. He says if police officers continue to dress like that, they are likely to be treated like political party cadres and thus the need to ensure that they are dressed properly. I want to say that uh, coming from a security background, I want to say to the police, to the Inspector General of Police, he should not allow people in civilian clothes to be holding any weapons that belong to the police. This is very, very dangerous because as a passerby, as a passerby, when you see somebody with not wearing a uniform holding an AK, you immediately think that that person is a criminal and you want to stop to beat up that particular person because you're thinking he's a criminal. He may be a police officer, but we should not allow that there because if we are going to allow people to, to be holding AKs without a police uniform, Supposing Dante Saunders is also there with an AK, you know, uh, there's got to be law and order. I want to say that the Zambia Alliance of Women, ZAO, has called on political leaders in the country to always ensure that they tame their cadres so as to reduce cases of political violence. Association Programs Manager Cesar Katebe tells QTV News that political violence is the reason why women stay away from political activities and thus the need to ensure that they vice is completely eradicated. Mr. Gatebe says the onus is on those with the instruments of power by becoming bold in doing their co correct thing. He says the majority of the populations are women who he says are the worst victims of the vice. And it is important that them being uh, 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 the regime that is in power begin to demonstrate that ability of taming their cadres to restrain themselves from, you know, uh, inflicting violence on those that are from the opposition. Because only then shall we begin to see reciprocity from those that are in the opposition. Because we know that the majority of our population are women. And when violence is taking place, it does not choose whether you are a, a, a woman, whether you are a man, that uh, violence will be inflicted upon you. It is incumbent upon the ones that are holding the instruments of power to inculcate a spirit of tolerance among its political players to a point where we begin to coexist. Difference in opinion does not mean that we are enemies. This country called Zambia is, 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 is our country. We have nowhere to run to as a country if we continue to practice the hate that is being perpetrated by those that are in the opposition and those that are in the uh, 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 holding instruments of power. Patriots for Economic Progress, PEP leader Sean Tembo, says the recent peace pact that was recently signed between the ruling Patriot Front and the United Party for National Development, UPND, 
To end political violence is unlikely to have any real impact on ending political violence in the country. Mr. Tembo has argued the solution to political violence lies in the law enforcement agencies enforcing the law firmly, fairly and equitably across the board, regardless of political party affiliation. He explains to Q News that the problem actually does not lie with the law enforcement agencies, but rather the political leadership that controls the law enforcement agencies, which instructs the police not to take any punitive action or action against the PF cadres whenever they break the law, but to take harsh action against opposition cadres even when they don't break the law. And uh, Mr. Tembo is of the view that the UPND made a mistake by being part of and signing the so-called peace pact with the ruling patriotic front, because by so doing, the UPND are indirectly accepting half of the blame of political violence. He has, however, appealed to President Lungu to desist from using violence as a political tool, whether by his own instigation or by his negligence in failing to supervise the ministers and law enforcement agencies. The problem of political violence is a law enforcement issue. And the reason political violence thrives today is because the PF government allows it. They use it as a political tool. Uh, political violence is not a problem to do with the opposition, such as the UPND or PEP, or indeed any other opposition. It is a duty of a government. And no one can really argue that the government is unable to stamp out political violence, because we saw how well they moved in to clear street vendors when there was a cholera outbreak. So they unleashed the full might of the state to clear street vendors. Why can't they unleash the same might of the state to basically stamp out political violence by prosecuting offenders, regardless of whether those offenders are PF cadres or not? For as long as the PF use political violence as a political tool, we shall never really end political violence in this country. And we shall continue to have these superficial uh, superficial gestures, such as the Peace Pact, which was recently signed. The Disability Right Watch National Coordinator Bruce Choma has observed that the nation has not fared well in terms of realizing the rights of persons with disabilities in political participation. Mr. Choma says persons with disabilities are left out in political activities, which he says is, the, is robbing, them, robbing them of their right to fully participate in political activities. He tells Q News that persons with disabilities should also participate in elections, not just as voters, but also as candidates, as it is their right to engage in political activities. He says there is also a need to use the, these by-elections to improve on voting systems for persons with disabilities, such as the use of braille jackets. Mr. Choma says persons with disabilities should feel that their votes are secured by not using an uh, assistant person to vote for them. There was an effort in the last general election to provide a braille jacket, but unfortunately because there was little awareness on how it works, but also it was only cut for one ballot paper, if there was a problem in terms of uptake. Uh, no one actually used those things properly. So we're hoping that we can build on the lessons and provide, uh, use the by-elections as, as an opportunity to actually address uh, the accessibility issues to the electoral process by persons with disabilities. We're also concerned that in listening to the campaign messages from all the candidates who are standing in the election, we are not hearing anyone talking about addressing the challenges of persons with disabilities, especially when you consider the fact that the local government uh, uh, structures, uh, local authorities, local planning authorities, as in the councils, they are the ones who are responsible for approving buildings and infrastructure for the city. We're expecting that mayoral candidates and council chairperson candidates must begin to talk about the need to ensure that they build an inclusive city so that we are able to build roads that cater for other road users, including wheelchair users, that we are able to approve public buildings that have accessibility features such as, such as ramps, you know, such as lifts, and also to ensure that as much as possible we follow the provisions of the Urban and Regional Planning Act as regards to ensuring that the rights of persons are being catered for. Inmates have been urged to use the educational system as well as donations, which they receive from Zambia Prison and Correctional Services and other partners to better themselves for life after prison. Prisons Care and Counseling Association Prisca Executive Director Godfrey Malembeka says while prisons are, the, are there to punish criminals, they were also meant to correct them and uh, set them from for a new life after prison. Dr. Malimbeka has aged inmates who make, the, make use of the education system in prison 
a system he says is aimed at improving their lives for a better future outside prison walls. In an interview with uh, Q News, Dr. Malembeka says the prison education system, supported by such partners, managed to turn young offenders into brilliant pupils. Dr. Malembeka has also commended the United States Office on Drugs and Crime for supplementing government's efforts in uplifting the living standards of prisoners in the country. And there are the news, but before I take a run, here's a recap of stories in the headlines. The Zambia National Farmers Union, ZNAQ, finds the 65 Kwacha pay 50 kg bag market price offered by the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, absurd and erroneously low. The Civil Society for Poverty Reduction, CSPR, has advised the government to the Ministry of Agriculture to start now the distribution of farming inputs under the FRSP. That's all for the news. Thank you so much. Sawa, God bless.